The 2016 Skyrim modding guide continues on in a new abridged format. This episode focuses on two mods by MEH321 that you may not even know you need. Fix lip sync and crash fixes. Hey guys, it's Cal from Dirty Weasel and welcome back. This is the first episode of the rapid fire version of the Skyrim modding guide. And we're gonna try and make these things as fast as possible. And today, of course, we're bringing you two mods by MEH321 that I hope will solve problems that you may not know you could fix or problems that you knew you fixed, could fix, but you didn't know how. So the first one, of course, is the lip sync fix. You know, Skyrim has a problem. All the NPCs have a speech impediment and their voices don't match up with their lips. And let's cue in Lydia to see a little example. The Jarl has recognized you as a person of great importance in the hold. There you go. Now, for me, it's not that bad. The lip sync fix isn't really that important, but it does make a difference. You know, the lip sync isn't that off for me, but depending on the speed of your computer and the CPU that you're running and the type of memory that you have, you know, the hard drive you're using, whether you're using a hard drive or an SSD, can increase the distance between the two syncs, between the voice and the lips. And some people, it's pretty bad. Well, MEH321 came up with a fix for it, and let's go take a look at it. And you can see it is mod 75951, Fix Lip Sync by MEH321. And basically, it's going to fix that. And I'm going to show you the before and after. Right now, here's Lydia again with a, you know, on the top is the before, and on the bottom is the after. The Jarl has recognized you as a person of great importance in the hold. A hero. The title of Thane is an honor. A gift for your service. Guards will know to look the other way if you tell them who you are. There you go. So, of course, this is a SKSE plugin, so you don't need to worry about too much. Let's go take a look at the files. We're going to go quickly through this one because it is relatively easy to do to install. SKSE plugin, install with Mod Manager manual. Manually download that with Manager. Of course, I have that in Mod Organizer already. What's going on here? All right, let's fix that. And you have Fix Lip Sync right there. Double click to install manual. And as you can see it's an SKSE plugin. So there you go. Click OK. And it's going to be down here at the bottom. Now I'm going to slide this up with all my other SKSE garbage right at the top. And we'll just call it right about there. It's fine. It's not that imperative where it goes. I just like keeping all my SKSE stuff at the top here. And that's it. I mean, just that quick. So let's move on to the second one. We'll close this out. All right, now we've got Crash Fixes by MEH321. And before we get started on it, I'm going to, you know, go through a little history lesson. You know, Bethesda doesn't use a, you know, a typical memory all allocation algorithm and the programming isn't standard. In other words, it doesn't use CMALIC. You know, it was always a problem. It was very limited. And over time, Shison, he who shall receive your firstborn, came up with Shison's memory fix. And that was later rolled into SKSE. And if you've ever installed SKSE through Mod Organizer, you know there are certain, certain things for that. And we'll open up Mod Organizer and you see SKSE scripts. If you installed it during the SKSE portion of this and you followed the step guidelines, you know there isn't any file that you created and you installed all this stuff. And you can see right here, memory default heap initial alloc MB, 768 scrap heap size MB, 256. This is the fix. That's what we're talking about, is this memory allocation system that Shison developed is going to be replaced by crash fixes. I want you to leave this all in place because crash fixes is going to bypass it. If crash fixes doesn't work for you, you want to go back to us, you don't have to go back and redo it. So just leave it. It's not going to hurt anything. Just leave it as it is. There's your history lesson on how this works. So we're going to go to the internet again. And we have Crash Fixes by MEH321, mod number 72725. And you can see basically it does two distinct things. It cr fixes crashes, hence the name Crash Fixes. And it covers about 20 different fixes in game. And it does it in one of three ways. Number one, it could give you a message if the game does crash, telling you that you have a problem and will kind of guide you on how to fix it yourself. Number two, it could completely fix the crash causing incident completely, but that's pretty rare. The most common thing 
is that it tells the game to suck it up, buttercup, and just keep running. In other words, ignore it because Skyrim's kind of unstable. Any little crash thing, it would just, any little error, it'll just crash it out. Well, most of the fixes provided by MEH321 in crash fixes are of the bypass variety. In other words, just ignore it. You can completely configure it in its own any file, but we'll go over that in just a second. The second portion of this, and this is the one that's more, you know, relevant to me, is the memory allocation fix. And this is what it talks about is right here, how to use the memory allocator patch. I'm going to tell you what it did for me. You know, my game doesn't crash, so all the little crash fixes, I couldn't tell if it was working or not. But the memory allocation did produce viable results. In my testing, I got about 20% reduction time in my load times. My load screens, reduction in my load screen times, about 20%. All the menus for crafting, going to your skills and perks menu, good popping open your map, were reduced. I couldn't measure it you know, exactly because it's an inexact thing. We're talking about milliseconds, but it does feel much faster. In a program like Add Item Menu, it was definitely faster. It was about 30 to 50% faster to pull up each of the different ESPs and all the items therein. So it did run much faster. So it is worth doing. So this is, you know, the second portion of it is what we're more interested in as far as what I want you to know. How to use the memory allocator patch. Contained in this information is you will need the SKSE plugin preloader. That is a separate mod. And I have it right here. If you're listening to MEH321, make this a hot link. Make this a hot link so I don't have to search for it. Here's the second portion of it. SKC plugin preloader by MEH321 and Shison. So Shison actually helped develop this and he says it does work. So, you know, that's kind of as close to an endorsement as you're going to get from the guy who is, you know, one of the gods of modding for Skyrim. So for this... It is a separate thing. We're going to do this one first because there's more, you know, less to talk about. Under the file section, you see a D3DX9 underscore 42 wrapper version 3. Download that manually onto your desktop. And of course, I have it on my desktop right here. We'll cover that in just a second. We're going to go back now that we've got that covered, and we're going to talk more about crash fixes. Under the instructions, it's going to tell you what to change in the crash fix plugins.ini and it's the use OS allocators equals zero. You're going to change that to use OS allocators equals one. I'll show you how to do that. And download the, install the SKSC plugin preloader. Okay, we've already downloaded it. We'll install it in just a second and start the game. If you get an error, sending the memory patch could not be applied. Read the message for help. Otherwise, you're good to go. Causes crash and use an EMB. Set expand system memory x64 equals false in your EMB.local. If you cause this game to crash more frequently, especially with UNP race menu sliders, try align heap allocate equals one in crash fix plugins. Any, I'll show you where both those are. So you keep running, read this down, and he provides documentation for each of the crash fixes, and you can activate them or deactivate them. They're all activated by default, and you can turn those off. He has special notes about safety load. You know, I don't recommend using safety load to begin with, but if you're using it, stable you to load. We don't use stable you to load. ENB. If you're using an ENB or ENB boost, here are the settings that you need to be aware of. Expand system memory x64, set that to false, and reduce system memory usage equals true. True. It's all true. It's true. And then bash patch, loot, all these other different notes. Common issues. If you have issues with these things, come back and read this portion right here. Common issues. I'm not going to read it for you right now because you're all big boys and girls. So, and there you go. What do we need to do for this? Well, you come to the files and you've got Crash Fixes version 10. This is the one I recommend that you use for right now. He has a beta up. I do not recommend using the beta as of yet because it is relatively new and it's not fully tested in my opinion yet. So I would continue using version 10. The mod author, MEH321, says you can replace version 10 with version 11 at any time. There are no problems and you can take it out at any time you want if you don't like what it's doing. So just keep that in mind. Download that with Manager. Now we are going to minimize that down. And we are going to do our first step. And that is the D3DX9 underscore 42 wrapper. You can see it comes in the zip file. I already have it on my desktop. And I've already unpacked the contents of the file. 
on my desktop so you can more readily see it. And you can see inside the file, you have a d3dx9 underscore 42 dot DLL. I want you to go ahead and copy that. Just go ahead and copy it. There you go. And go and close it. Now, wherever you keep your Skyrim main folder, and of course I have it on my desktop, but of course if you open that up, you see it's, you know, games. That's my drive that I have it on my SSD. Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim. And you know you're in the right spot when you see this, TS5.exec. You know you're in the right spot. And what you're going to do is just go ahead and paste. And you see now we have a D3DX9 underscore 42 dot DLL. And what this file does is it tells the game to run the SKSE plugin for the crash fixes first before running the game so it can use the memory allocation. That's all it's doing. You can now close that. You don't need the readme in there. You know, there's a readme, you don't need that in there, but if you wanna read it, you can. So now we go over to Mod Organizer and we are going to install Crash Fixes. Go over through all the any edits and all that good stuff. Crash Fixes, double click to install, manual, and you'll see it's only SKSE. Go and click OK. And down here at the bottom, we have Crash Fixes. Go and activate this, and this is a little more important in my opinion. I'm going to go and slide it all the way up under SKSE scripts. So basically I want this to run with this, but I want, you know, that D3DX9 underscore 42 DLL is going to tell it to run it first. But this is how I want it to work because there's other stuff going on in SKSE. I want to run it before it. They're all going to kind of run at the same time. Don't worry about it too much. Open this up and you're going to see an any file. Click on it. Open this up so you can read a little more clearly here. Now, the first portion of the any file talks about the memory allocation. And you remember in the instructions, it tells you to set use OS allocators from zero, you can see it right there, from zero to one. Now your memory patch override using cmalloc is now activated. And that's all you need to do about that. So you're all ready to go. Now, what is the rest of this? Well, these are instances of what the game may crash. And you can see, you know, they have the align heap alloc equals zero. We talked about this using the sliders on the race menu, and you may need to set that to one, but that's a very specific thing. Leave it for default unless you have a problem. Each of these other instances, and you can see info game crashes when str comp is passed, null character. You can see that right down here where it doesn't have the semicolon right here equals one. In other words, that crash fix is active. And you keep scrolling down, you'll see more and more of these. And you can see all the one, the crash fixes he's come up with. All right, now, you can turn these on or turn these off however you wish, either by setting it to zero for inactive or one to active. I will say this, my game does not crash. So I don't know if these are working or not. Some of the things I'm not really sure you need to be running. And there are, you know, instances where other mod authors have said, I'm not sure that we really need to have this running if we don't know exactly what's going on. I'm going to show you an example of this. Let me find it. Okay, here's one right here. Info, crash happens in movement planner, agent warp function. Unknown what it does. Unknown. That bothers me. So, you know, and something like this, I'm going to go ahead and since, I, since we don't really know what's going on here, I'm going to change that to zero. My game didn't crash before. I'm not that concerned about it crashing if this is set to, to zero. But anything like that that you know, you're not really sure about and you don't feel comfortable having a crash fix stop the crashing, you can go ahead and just change it. And when you're all done, and make sure you've already set the most important thing. This is the memory allocation issue right up here. Use OS allocators equals one. Make sure you've changed that to one if you want the memory allocation to be changed and click save. And you can now close it. So that's basically it. Like I said, the SKSE scripts, the any file for this, you can just go ahead and leave it as it is because it's now been bypassed. And that should be it. If, like I said, if you don't think that it's working for you or it causes crashes and everything else doesn't work for you as far as MEH321's, you know, description on how to change it or how to fix it. Just de deactivate it. If it doesn't work for you to deactivate it, it's not going to hurt your game any or any of your saves, but it should work. 
It works for me. So that's all I got for you right now, guys. Hopefully we made this a quick one and we'll continue on with other quick hitters in the future. My name's Cal. I'm from Dirty Weasel and I'm signing off. <laughs>